Louisville 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Okay, Thursday morning, July 17th. I'm looking at the weather for the weekend, and I think it's going to be good. Awesome. Uh, we're here on Thursday morning. Every, every Thursday morning, you get that kind of itchy, tomorrow's the weekend feeling. You Especially during the summertime. Are you, you itching? That. Are you itching? I'm itching right now. Did you scratch right on my back, back of my arm? I'm not touching you. Back of my arm? <laughs> no. No? 87 the high today. 86 the high on Friday. Uh, and 82 on uh, 85 on Saturday and 82 on Sunday. Another great Sunday for the Big Kahuna Beach Party at um, Molly's on the beach behind the Doubletree Oceanfront Resort. If you have not been to the uh, beach party, this would be the week to go. Looks like it's going to be beautiful weather. And by the way, uh, one of the things that we've learned from people is, uh, you know, the 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 pier there at Molly's, yeah. and the uh, and, and the area right there next to the restaurant has a lot of tables. But we've noticed now that the party has gotten to the point we have a lot of regulars that show up every Sunday there for the beach party. Um, so, and a lot of people like to actually sit on the beach. You, uh, the DoubleTree wanted us to let people know you are allowed. To, you know, to come there and go to the beach and take your beach chairs out on the beach and sit there and, and listen to the beach music from the Big Kahuna. That's cool. But, you know, people dance on the pier, and the food and the drinks are great. And um, mm-hmm. this has been going on since Memorial Day weekend, and it's gotten bigger and bigger every weekend. And so this weekend, this is going to be a special weekend this weekend. Bring your beach chairs if you want to do that, or you can just wait for a table. But a lot of people just kind of hang out and... But the tables are, you know, people come yep. and sit at the tables. Yep, yep. And uh, so that's one of the things happening with uh, Molly's this weekend. What else is going on? McGee, it's nice to see you. How are hey, you? And it's good to see you. It's nice to see you, I definitely you, have that itch. wonderful to see. I, I wish I hadn't started that with you. This well, no, I just, definitely I, nice to I, got, I got the itch. It's definitely nice <laughs> to see. It's a good itch. I don't, this is this is this is geeking me out. What do you? What, I mean, I'm Let's ready for the weekend. To, uh, I don't want to hear about your itch. I'm ready for the Let's weekend. <laughs> Why well, you, you brought it up? <laughs> yeah. My wife has some powder for that. Do you want me to bring it for you tomorrow? Hey, did you think your wife for the spice cake? By the way, that we was delicious. Very, very. She good. asked me last night when I got home. Have you had any of the spice cake? I have not. She asked me last night, "How did the spice cake go at the station?" And I said, "The." Um, like like vultures on a possum. Yep. That's a good way to put it. Except I got here this morning and there were two small pieces left by the coffee pot. Oh. And I was surprised to see them, especially considering that the day crew came in and also had a shot at it. Day crew's tough. Some people don't like to eat the last piece of cake. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> well, there's, you might get it out there this morning. It actually, uh, her spice cake goes great with uh, coffee. Coffee, mm. But yes. I'm not going to have it this morning. Uh, Heather King, ladies and gentlemen, at the Hello. news desk. Uh, it's nice to have you here this morning. Good to see you. It's been a couple of weeks. I know holidays. We love whatnot. having you here. It's fun to be here. It's a nice change of yeah. pace this for is, me. I mean, admit it. This is more fun than doing the news on WITN. Oh, it's definitely more interesting. Yeah, it's more fun. I, I love said this. Fun. I didn't it say interesting. Well, it's when you say both interesting, fun that could that could, that could be taken differently, and I could become insulted by it. I understand. Um, it's definitely different. <laughs> well. <laughs> Great personality. It's interesting. Um, yes. No, it's no. I love being here. It's so much fun, and I and it's fun to hear different things about what's going on in Greenville that we're not necessarily covering at WITN. So it's yeah, it's fun. I always learn a lot and have lots of fun. You heard me laugh all day long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, GreenvilleHeadlines.com this morning. We've got the second alert in two days on this missing teenager from Greenville, and um, I, I, this disturbs me. It's a beautiful young girl here. If you hadn't seen this, go to greenvilleheadlines.com. Her name is, uh, there was some confusion about her name when the sheriff's department first released her name, but uh, which, which in and of itself I, I found odd. But this 16 year old girl, her name is Destiny DeMaio. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right D E M I A O. Destiny DeMaio 
has been missing from her Greenville home since June 27th. You don't know her, do you, Julia? No. Don't know Destiny? Sheriff's official uh, released a statement early Wednesday morning saying the uh, young lady has been missing since June 27th and has been known in the past to hang out in Kinston um, and may have been heading to Jacksonville. And she was last seen wearing a black and white striped shirt. She uh, last spoke to her friends seven days ago. Well, today would be eight days. If anybody, and, and if you know anything about this missing young lady, first of all, go to uh, greenvilleheadlines.com if you want to see. We've got a couple of photos of her on there. Call so the Pitt County Sheriff's Office. 16? 15, I think. 15? Yeah. Well, she's, uh, she was born September 1st, 1998. So she'll be 16 in a, in a week, uh, in a month. In a, in, yeah. yeah, she's 15. Wow, she looks older than that, doesn't she? She does. Yeah. Mm. Bless her heart. All kids these so days. She's okay. Yeah, you just what don't want to saying? hear that. Mm -mm. There's some question whether she's a runaway or, you know. I think the Sheriff's Department has worded the releases as though they believe she may be a runaway, which brings up a whole new issue. But uh, yeah. I, hope, I hope they find her and that yep. turns Certainly. out to be a happy ending. Certainly. Uh, we talked uh, earlier. We're going to have... Um, Dennis Mitchell on here in a few minutes. Dennis is the um, chairman of the new Bond Advisory Committee as appointed by the Greenville City Council. And they had their first meeting last night. And um, they were given direction by uh, Barbara Lipscomb, the uh, Greenville City Manager. Uh, each council member nominated two people to serve on this board, on this committee. And this is the committee charged with the task of coming back to the city council and saying, this is what we think you should do in terms of whether or to run a bond referendum. You heard the mayor say here on the show the other day, he wants a bond this November. Well, he said he originally wanted a bond this November. He thought that the best way to go was to have a bond this November. Actually, I think he said that on Greenville Grit last week. And, um, but again, I mentioned this earlier this morning. Uh, there's a story on the front page of the Daily Reflector this morning. Advisory group meets. Committee with, committee will offer council direction on obligation bond details. But listen to the first sentence of the story in the newspaper this morning. Talk about framing it up in a negative way. <laughs> Greenville's city council began in May to consider a proposed $28 million general obligation bond, which potentially would require a four-cent tax increase to address needs in the city. See, this is why it was idiotic to raise taxes in May. This is why the current Greenville City Council showed no leadership or forethought on how to go about this because you can't keep throwing this at the citizens. I mean, you cannot keep saying, well, we needed it to. And, and, you know, all we're hearing now, well, you know, the old city council didn't take care of business. I don't believe that. In fact, I, I want, I just, I hope this bond committee, and I want to encourage Dennis to do this. You know, I hope they come back to the to the citizens and say, here's exactly what needs to be done with the roads, and here's exactly how much it's going to cost, and here's how much is available inside the city budget now for that. Because the Greenville City Council set aside $4 million for road repaving two years ago, and it hadn't been used. And we keep getting told we've got to raise taxes and have a bond obligation, a bond uh, referendum because we need to spend money on roads. Well, if we need money on roads to be spent that badly, why aren't they spending the money that's already there? What is going on in the city of Greenville these days? And um, then they raised taxes saying we had to do something about the roads. <laughs> and now they're going to say we got a bond referendum. So we got... What are we going to do? Rebuild an entire city? It just it, it gets to be crazy. So
So Dennis Mitchell will be here this morning to respond to that. And on top of that, there's here's the thing. as an I don't know the answer to what we really need, but here's what I do know. There's not consensus even among those that are looking at it. Because you got the you got the you got the, the Calvin Mercer crowd that wants to raise taxes, then you got the mayor coming back last week and saying we didn't need to raise taxes, right? So I mean, what? How do you know? You got a guy like Terry Boardman, who's a CPA, who's now dug down into the thing and says there's money already there. And then. Let's face it, we all distrust government, right? We just do. We should. I think it's healthy to distrust government. (laughs) Terry Boardman's of the world are very important people. They are. Terry, look, you know, here's the thing. Terry has done yeoman's work. Now, you know, you may question Terry's style because he gets in your face. (laughs) And, you know, I mean, he writes his emails and copy. Are you on his email list? I'm not. You should get on it. <laughs> I'm sure Terry would be happy to add anybody who wants to get on his email list. Well, I'm always interested in information. <laughs> Terry Boardman, who's a local CPA, who, uh, by the way, if you want to see his appearance last night on Greenville Grit and get his perspective. Now, again, remember, it's his perspective. But I listened to that driving into town last night, and Terry's pretty impressive. He's been a CPA for many, many years. He was a business consultant. He now teaches at the university. And he is, I don't know anybody else outside of an auditor or city government who's taken the time, a qualified person, who's taken right. the time to look at what's going on. And Terry understands a lot of this stuff. And, and you know, he is, look, if he's doing nothing else, he's making the city staff sharpen their pencil and get it right you know that's the that's the good thing you just said it he's very important yeah people like that are very important to hold government accountable for especially financial and fiscal issues yeah so dennis mitchell will be here in a few minutes and we're going to get his perspective on that uh i saw there was a big uh, pirate club meeting last night in washington yeah pirate armada kind of the kind of the last leg of their little journey over the summer it looks like uh, I, I'm looking at a picture on, in the newspaper of uh, Jeff Kopfer, Heather Macy, Cliff Godwin, and Ruffin McNeil, and it looks like the Phil Donahue show. <laughs> 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 Look at that. Is Kopfer think he's Wait, who's Phil, Phil Donahue? What's he doing with that microphone? He's, <laughs> he's probably walking out in the audience and saying, yes, ma'am, you've got a question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good-looking group. It's a good crowd. It's a, it's 40, a good crowd. 44 days. Till the first football game. 44 days Not to kick off. Everyone's counting. Thank God Very for college excited. football. Oh, Tell me about it. Seriously. The other night I was there was some sports update that came on when my husband and I were prepping dinner and I was like, what are they going to put in this sports update? You know, like there's no sports to talk about. And I said, oh, I'm so ready for football. And he goes, well, football just ended making a joke about the World Cup oh, that yeah, he and yeah. I didn't really care much about. And I looked, I gave him like this look like of confusion and anger. <laughs> We really shouldn't choke about college football, sweetheart. (laughs) Very excited about uh, football season coming and our sports coverage. I will say this. Every year uh, we've added Steve Logan to our lineup. We've added uh, some folks to to, uh, report sports. And uh, let me just say this. We have an announcement coming in the next few days that – is going to be a huge announcement here at the station. And I think basically when, when we make the announcement, people will know it. I'm, I'm not overstating it when I say we're carrying our sports coverage to a whole new level oh. this year. That's exciting. Very soon. Just whisper it into the microphone, Henry, so I can hear it. No one else can. Just tell me. <laughs> I didn't catch that. <laughs> <laughs> Trent McGee sports talk all the time. Oh, oh heavens no. Yes. I said going to a new Trent level. I didn't mean that level. The name, the actual name, the show after me, the station after me is going to be all, all trend all the time, all sports. Yeah. All That's what I'm people not, want. It's what the people want. Yeah. yeah. That's exciting. When so, is yeah. this announcement going to be made? Uh, I think it could possibly be coming Monday. Waiting on one more contract to be signed. Dun, dun, dun. It's exciting. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, it is exciting. Very Can't exciting. Can't wait to hear 
Uh, 19 minutes after, uh, let's get a break and we'll come back. Heather will have news headlines and we will have Dennis Mitchell joining us here live in the studio this morning as we uh, talk about the um, meeting last night with the bond referendum committee and uh, what's going to happen. Are we looking at another, another tax increase in Greenville? Child, please. We'll be right back. At the law firm of Hardy and Hardy, we don't simply take cases. We take your case personally. I've been in several car accidents, and each time I've turned to Hardy and Hardy for help. They are honest, hardworking, and dependable. I've been satisfied with the conclusion of each case, and I would recommend Wayne and Charles Hardy to my family and friends. You matter to us. Protecting the rights of the seriously injured. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has your new truck this summer. Save up to $10,000 on a new Ram 1500 or lease it for only $139 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on B. Stokes Road. It's a well-secured facility with a living manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300. Summer savings have arrived at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Save up to $4,000 on a new Dodge Journey or at least the all-new Jeep Cherokee for just $199 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Twenty-two after. Welcome back, Talk of the Town on Thursday morning. It is the seventeenth day of July. Weekend looks pretty good. We're going to have some afternoon scattered storms here or there, but the temperatures are going to be down this weekend. We'll have the full forecast for you in just a moment. Also, that interview coming up with Dennis Mitchell, chairman of the Bond Advisory Committee for the City of Greenville. What's going to happen with that? Now that they've had their first meeting, we'll talk to Dennis uh, here in a couple minutes. But first, to the news desk this morning, Heather King is here. From WITN with our local news update. Good morning, Heather. Hey, good morning, Henry. Good morning, everyone. In your news this morning, the Common Core curriculum standards that dictate what is taught in grade school classrooms across North Carolina, it's on its way out. Governor Pat McCrory signaled he would sign a compromise bill that the House passed Wednesday and the Senate signed off on last week to rewrite the standards. The House approved that bill, 71 to 34, that would take the statewide curriculum to better tailor it for North Carolina students. McCrory said in a written statement, quote, I will sign this bill because it does not change any of North Carolina's education standards. It does initiate a much needed comprehensive and thorough review of standards. No standards will change without the approval of the State Board of Education, end quote. 
Deputies say the teen accused of holding a salon owner and a customer at gunpoint nearly three weeks ago is now in jail. According to deputies at the Pitt County Jail, 19-year-old Trayvon Atkins of Farmville was arrested Wednesday night. Police say that teen broke through a glass door with a handgun at the P&P Salon in Farmville on June 26th, holding the owner and customer at gunpoint. Atkins is being held on a $250,000 bond ahead of his first appearance in court scheduled for this morning. Two teenagers were flown to Vida Medical Center in Greenville from Martin County after their SUV rear-ended a piece of farm equipment on a four-lane highway. State troopers say that crash happened on U.S. 64 at mile marker 510 in Martin County just before noon on Wednesday. Troopers say it was okay, legal, for the lull which hauls hay to be on the highway there. It was going about 30 miles per hour when the Jeep came up behind it doing about 70. The farm employee was taken to Martin General with minor injuries. Troopers say the two people in the Jeep who were taken to Vidant were not buckled up. The Highway Patrol says the teen driver never hit his brakes before impact and he will be charged. Retiring Beaufort County Sheriff Alan Jordan says he will not make an endorsement in the upcoming sheriff's race. In Tuesday's runoff, voters picked Al Whitney on the Democratic side and Republicans nominated Ernie Coleman. Coleman's a retired state trooper, while Whitney is a current juvenile court counselor. The two defeated candidates have ties to the current sheriff. Harry Meredith is a retired chief deputy, while Russell Davenport is a current captain. When he announced his retirement in February, Sheriff Jordan endorsed Davenport as his successor. Jordan says, while he will not endorse a candidate now. He will ensure a smooth transition for whomever wins. Thousands of kids go hungry during summer months when school is out, and some local churches are teaming up to help them feed their bellies. The food bank says nearly 61,000 Eastern North Carolina kids lose access to free and reduced-cost lunches while they're out of school. That's why St. Timothy's and St. Paul's Episcopal Churches teamed up with Our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Greenville to fight the problem with a food drive Wednesday. The food drive itself is over, but the effort is not. If you would like to donate, you're welcome to contact the food bank in Greenville. And that's your WITN News Update at 825. I'm Heather King. Henry, back to you. All right, very good. Let's check our weather update now. Here is McGee with weather. Uh, looking good for the next few days for your Friday. Looking at a uh, high of 85 degrees, partly sunny skies, lows Friday night in the mid to upper 60s. For your Saturday, partly sunny, but a 10% chance of a late day shower or storm. Highs around 84, 85 degrees for your Saturday. And again, lows in the mid 60s. And for Sunday, pretty much the same forecast intact. A little more, more clouds in the sky for your Sunday. Highs around 84, 85 degrees and lows in the upper 60s. Oh, hello. The <laughs> <laughs> I looked up and saw myself on camera while you were talking. Hi, me. Hey, was you. I on camera that whole time? I wasn't like yeah. picking my nose, was I? <laughs> I just looked up and saw, went, oh, wait a minute, Hi. that's me. Uh, do you watch the TV show Secrets and Lies? I, I've never even heard of it. Does anybody know about that show? Mm -hmm. Ryan Felipe and uh, Juliet Lewis, two pretty big stars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was shot in Wilmington, oh. and they're coming back to uh, film in Wilmington again starting next week. Oh, I'd go check you it out. You know, with all this talk about the film incentives mm -hmm. and Wilmington losing the, um, the, the TV credit. and movie stuff, the tax credit for movie mm -hmm. companies and TV companies. Uh, Secrets and Lies will begin production in Wilmington in the Porter's Neck area. I know that area. That's out by uh, Figure Eight Island. Mm-hmm. It is. Porter's Neck. I played Porter's Neck golf course several times. Yeah. And what's the really nice course right there? Where they, that's the same area there oh, where they're going to uh, play the Wachovia of uh, the uh, Wells Fargo uh, Eagle Point. Eagle, Eagle Point. Absolutely. Eagle Point is across the street. <laughs> Eagle Point, which is one of the nicest golf courses now in the country. Nice. Across the street from Porter's Neck Golf Course. So they're getting one TV show, but I mean... That's the other thing that if they're going to really uh, adjourn the legislature next Friday, a week from tomorrow. That will expire without comment then? Could. Yeah. Lots of work to do. See, there's that. There's also the med school funding. If they don't get a deal on the budget, that right. would uh, not get finished. And that would, you know, that would be devastating to ECU. I can tell you that. Can't let that happen. But the, I have a lot of friends down in Wilmington. I was having in a meeting with one last week who, you know, they feel like it's Wilmington's going to really get nailed if these uh, tax credits don't get put back in. Sure. And I don't see that happening. I think there's going to be a major change in that somehow. We'll see. A lot, yeah. a lot on the table with yeah. the. Uh, and there were no filing deadlines in place on that calendar either. There were co-sponsored deadlines in place. If you wanted to co-sponsor a bill, but there were no filing deadlines in place. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, you know, you hear it during the say, you hear about crossover. I never heard about that. What's crossover? Where one bill cannot That's go right. to the other chamber. Where, a, a, you know, they usually have a crossover date where, you know, uh, a bill, by, after this date, no bill can leave one chamber and go to the other chamber. So you've got to get it passed in that chamber. Okay. I haven't heard, uh, I mean, it's just been a strange legislative session. Mm -hmm. Can't we all just get along? Well, forever, this, this session will ever, forever be known as the Rodney King General Assembly. Just kidding. Not really. The uh, news and weather update brought to you by Greenville Vital Signs, our online and over the air 24 7 health fair. If you, uh, if you need a service, if you need a medical practice, if you need a dentist, if you need a gastroenterologist or a pediatrician or a cancer specialist, GreenvilleVitalSigns.com. That's where you need to go. You can learn about all sorts of things at Vitant Health, including the um, um, mental health, the behavioral health department. Interview on there with uh, Dr. Thomas Penders. Uh, and also from Vitant, the Cancer Care Navigators Program. Great interview on here that Jennifer Little did with Dr. David Ames about uh, the opiate and heroin addiction in Pitt County, mm -hmm. which is a bigger problem than people know. Scary. Um, if you need a dentist, we've got Williams and Pabst. Interview with uh, Dr. Billy Williams and Dr. Mark Pabst on here. Uh, if you need a pediatrician, Dr. Caroline Morgan from Pirate Pediatrics. And if you need a gastroenterologist, Dr. Uh, Ray Fountain and Dr. Tom Sturgis. All on GreenvilleVitalSigns.com. And uh, GreenvilleVitalSigns.com, Greenville Vital Science, the show, airs on Monday nights at 6.30 on 103.7 and Cable 7. But check it out online, GreenvilleVitalScience.com. All right, 8.30, let's go to break. Dennis Mitchell next. What's going on? East with the Carolina bond. Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has your new truck this summer. Save up to $10,000 on a new Ram 1500 or lease it for only $139 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South just four miles from Bells Fork and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy where we know dogs. At the law firm of Hardy & Hardy, we don't simply take cases. We take your case personally. I've been in several car accidents, and each time I've turned to Hardy & Hardy for help. They are honest, hardworking, and dependable. I've been satisfied with the conclusion of each case, and I would recommend Wayne and Charles Hardy to my family and friends. You matter to us. Protecting the rights of the seriously injured. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on Bee Stokes Road. It's a well-secured facility with a live-in manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300.
Summer savings have arrived at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Save up to $4,000 on a new Dodge Journey or at least the all new Jeep Cherokee for just $1.99 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. I got to hear a little bit of that Katrina and the waves. Come on. <laughs> I like that. All right, 834, 26 in front of 9 o'clock. Um, the uh, tax increase for the city of Greenville has a lot of people shaken up. Now comes word that the city council is considering a bond referendum that would uh, potentially um, raise $28 million dollars for more expenditures for the city, and that would be another four cent tax increase potentially, according to this morning's newspaper. Uh, the Greenville City Council has appointed local citizens to be part of a bond advisory committee to uh, to talk about this and um, to give the city council direction on what they think they need to do or what should be done, particularly when it comes to uh, some of the needs of the city and. Um, I said this morning, Dennis, I like this group. It looks like a if I was picking a group of people to do this, I think this would be a good group to pick. Oh, yeah. I, I know just about everybody on here, including you. Well, Dennis Mitchell, who is the uh, former city councilman here in Greenville, and, uh, and now you were elected chairman of this group. Dennis Mitchell, live in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? How are you? I'm doing good. Have you not been abused enough yet? You have to keep getting back I'm involved. I'm starting to think that, too. I was wondering that after the meeting was over. I was like, what just really happened here? <laughs> <laughs> I just said you're on the uh, Greenville Utilities Commission. You're on this. Uh, you're going to be running this, which I'm sure is going to be pretty busy for several several months here. Uh, you're, you're probably busier now than you were when you were on the city council. Slightly. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> All right, let's start from the beginning. Uh, why do we need uh, a committee? What are the needs? This says $28 million is on the table. We, we've heard $10 million. We've heard, you know, the need is for roads mostly, and then you hear, well, we have a lot of buildings in disrepair and those kind of things. The city just raised two cents tax increase. There was money put aside by the council when you were on it for roads. People are confused. I think you're the perfect guy to kind of explain what's going on. Um, and I think um, that was a little bit – you were able to see a little bit of that last night because, I mean, and I think this bond commission actually, because you said the type of people on it, is going to answer a lot of questions too because a lot of people were asking a lot of good questions last night, um, you know, just surrounding the need for it. Do we even need it? And, I, and that was clear last night. So this bond Meaning do we need a bond referendum? Do we need a bond referendum? Right. So a lot of people were asking that question, do we need it? And I imagine so, the other question is – would it pass if you put it out there? That question was asked last night, too. <laughs> do we need it? Will it pass? And if we do need it, is it as large as we're going to send to the city council, or should it be larger? So I think this bond commission is really, we can really be there forever if we wanted to, because people, we're going to ask a lot of questions and, 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 and really put everything out there of, of what we should really give the city council. And then the city council doesn't have to accept it when we give it to them um, in the end, either way. So, uh, what is the major need? Is it is it streets we need to worry about? What what is what do we need a bond for? We're going to go through all that month by month. I, we started to get into the roads a little, probably too much in detail last night at the very first meeting. But I think that's going to take a lot of discussion. There's a lot of questions surrounding that, like you talked about the four million dollars that was get allocated when I was on city council. A lot of questions were asked about that not being spent yet. Um, the city was talking about they're doing a study. They did an assessment, which is complete on, on the roads analysis, but now they got to go to GUC and the cable company to figure out which roads they're planning on tearing up before they decide which roads to pave. So that's taking forever. Um, and the fact, the matter is, which the bond, the roads that they showed us with the, the um, 10 point something million dollars they allocated in the bonds, I mean, that's really, once you repave the entire Arlington Boulevard, you probably pretty much used all your money already, or $14 million there. So does this bond package even get us to where we need to be anyway? So there's just a lot of questions surrounding roads, you know. And if we do allocate the money, how long is it going to take for the roads to start? That was very clear. I think this bond commission, if they do give decide to go with bond, they're going to put deadlines and timelines on a lot of this stuff. Is it your opinion that um, 
that this this committee can work fast enough to propose to the city council to actually get something on the ballot this November? If 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 the committee makes that decision from the onset, um, I think first the committee got to realize come to come to a conclusion what its charge is because it was wide open. Um, the city council just pretty much said, you know, this committee get together. You're gonna come up with a bond. We were confused by the pack, by the fact that the the city staff already gave the city council a bond for one. So you know, are we not going by that bond? She said, well, you can go by that bond, or you can come up with a brand new one. Now, if we come up with a brand new one, the knowledge base is wide on this commission, so it's gonna take a lot of time for people to get acclimated on what the city really needs. So, hopefully, we'll be there four months. Um, but this committee can go on forever. But I mean, my goal is to. Is what I brought up last night to try to make it quicker. Let's go by what the city council was given. You know, are there any tweaks that need to be made? Has staff got any other recommendations? Because that was clear. Staff said that we gave this bond package based on city council's guidance. This is not necessarily what we would have gave for a bond package had we had free reign to come up with a bond package for the city of Greenville. Let's clarify a couple of the things that we've that you've thrown out and that we've talked about this morning. And and again. Um, a good resource on this stuff is is Terry Boardman, who has become very active in digging. Uh, Terry is a local citizen, a local CPA, who's been digging into the city books. He's not elected. He's not appointed. He's just a, kind of a, a, a citizen who's concerned about what's going on and has been – he's created a uh, his own blog <laughs> uh, by, by sending a, an email or, in some cases, three or four emails a day out to uh to to the media and to other people in in uh, city government and just citizens in Greenville uh you know he brings up a good point this uh, 4 million dollars we keep hearing that roads are crumbling but you know when you were on the Greenville City Council uh I remember you and Max Joyner and others saying let's start to put money aside for roads and you started doing that years ago and you built up a fund that uh, ended up with $4 million for road repair in it. If the roads are crumbling, why have we not spent that money? I mean, that's the question of the day. Uh, we started getting into that last night. Um, we actually talked about this with Terry um, the other day on the Greenville Grid. That's the question of the day, you know. And, and, and that's one of the things I wrote down because I didn't want to dominate the meeting last night is they keep on saying the roads are critical. We well, define critical. It, critical means they're going to fail tomorrow, two months from now, a year from now, because it's, like you said, it's taking a very long time from the, to spend the money that we have. And that's the concern going forth. And Terry brings a logical point is if we can't spend the money that we were already given, you know, how can we ask the voters to give more money? What's the confidence in the voters that this money is going to be used and spent in the amount of time that needs to be spent? Yeah, on? I think the city is going to have to answer that question, why that money has not been spent. Uh, and I know that, you know, I just remember when Thomas Langston Road was being expanded uh, from uh, uh, Memorial Drive over to Evans Street. It just took forever to get that road built. It just, it just seems like there's some paralysis in, in getting streets done and, in Greenville. And, and, and that was kind of a little frustration last night. Um, and I'm, I was actually planning on sending an email on it. I know we're planning on having Kevin Mulligan, the um, public works director on the Greenville Grid next week is when he was asked, you know, the timeline, you know, from talking to Greenville Utilities and, and the cable company to figure out about the roads, they didn't have any answer for the, the end date. And I think that's important. We really need to know when they're going to spend that money. There's a lot of money still left in there. If roads are at the, the failure that the city says they are, then they need to put the payment, get to the payment and start repaving them. All right, now, Abby Bennett's uh, story on the front page of the Greenville Reflector this morning. The first paragraph is... Greenville's city council began in May to consider a proposed $28 million general obligation bond, which potentially would require a four-cent tax increase to address the needs in the city. Now, you know, you know, like I do, Dennis, people are tired of hearing that word tax increase. They're tired of hearing that. And when you say another four cents on top of two cents, you're talking about potentially 6% tax increase in a year. That's uh, that's not going. You know, people are not going to vote themselves a four cent tax increase. So what, what's in that twenty eight million dollars besides roads? What, what else are we looking at trying to do with this money? Um, there's some parks in there. Um, new parks. New parks. Um, upgrades to existing facilities. There's a, a public safety component in there, which I'm going to ask questions about because it lo really looks like a little bit of maintenance on the police 
department, not really anything that's needed to um, benefit the safety of the public, just some maintenance. And they just create a maintenance fund. So is it possible that maintenance fund can fund those things? As well as Terry brought this um, this morning was something that I wrote down to ask a question later about is the fire truck. You know, is there a fire truck in this? There's a Two fire trucks, a fire truck and a brush truck, whatever a brush truck is. But Terry brought it up. You got $7 million in a vehicle replacement I, I know that's the other frustrating thing about this is that if, if we're talking about raising taxes to pay for things like fire trucks, isn't that what we were just told we had to do? Yeah, so why? Because and, and, then, and then we found out that um, there's $7 million in a vehicle replacement fund that hasn't been spent. And, uh, you know, how much money do we need for vehicles? Well, <laughs> I mean, and that's and I, I'm glad Terry's asking those questions. So I hope we get we get some answers for things like that. So that's really a penny that you can knock off if you use that that maintenance fund to, to work with the uh, the police department and, and 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 buy the fire trucks with the vehicle replacement fund. That's a penny going on already there. But one question that came up last night that I think is going to be good that comes out of this is people really asking about the return on investment, the economic development benefit that the city council did, did not have in this um, in their bond package. So. Maybe something good can come out of it. Like the, the group is well diverse. Um, like I said, we don't even know if we're going to send the city council back what they gave us, send them back something new, or say no bond at all. Hopefully that'll be fleshed out in the next couple months. We're going to meet twice a month. So, I mean, everyone's committed to really get in there and really find out what's going on to try to, to get something to them. Because one thing was brought up, even if we passed, put this on a November ballot um, in, what, 2015 or 2014 this year? No, we can't do it this year, so it has to be 2015 because of the time frame um, that it will take till spring of the following year to even get the money. And then you go to city contracting process. So you're looking maybe about tw late 2016, 2017 before the city even starts to spend money on some of these things. Well, if you, if you move this uh, bond referendum to next year, it would come in the same year that the city council's got to run for re-election. That would be some interesting Drama, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm all for it being next year. <laughs> You're hoping that happens, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, but we'll, I mean, that's one thing. If we do that, we have to have it. We have to have. We had a goal of getting to the city council by January planning session. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, you got to look at the dynamics on the city council. I suspect no matter what we give them. They're going to change it or uh, to make sure they benefit that um, whichever direction city council is going in. So if your goal is to get it to the city council by January, then it sounds like that everybody's pretty much in agreement that it's not going to be put on the November ballot. Not in this year. So, so is that is that a done deal? Because I know the mayor, yeah, it, it can't the be, mayor originally said well, he thought it ought to be on this year's ballot. There is no way possible it can get on this year's ballot unless we passed it last night, because the question had to be written up. I think the local government commission had to approve it and everything like that. Um, so there's nowhere possible. It wasn't even discussed to be on the ballot for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I mean, for this November. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, uh, I want to thank you and the others. And again, I'll read the list of names here because it's a good group. You've got uh, Will Franklin, Bill Clark from Bill Clark Homes, Kelly Barnhill, Tawanda Steinberg from bb &T, yourself, Alberta Blanco, who you used to work with, who is now with uh, uh, Lawrence Bears Group, LBA, uh, John Tart, Terry Williams, Tony Parker, Ashley Breedlove, Tommy, uh, Tammy Purdue. Bianca Schoenman, Tony Corey, Michael Overton, great group of people mm -hmm. to advise the uh, city council and the citizens on what to do about this bond. Uh, let's back up a little bit. Uh, you've been vocal. I've heard you on Greenville Grit a couple of times, um, and you've been doing a great job of uh, helping people understand what's going on in city government on that show. Greenville Grit's become a great show, I believe, for folks who want to keep up what's going on in the city. Oh, yeah. And, and, um, and then... Um, the mayor was on last week saying, you know, we didn't even – there was enough money if we dug deep enough into the budget. We didn't have to We didn't have to raise taxes two cents. Now, having come off the city council recently, last year, what is your opinion of that? Did the city council knee-jerk and uh, – were they too quick to try to raise taxes? Oh, absolutely. I mean, pretty much taxes was, was raised because – Due to an unknown. I mean, right now, the, the state legislator and the governor said they're going to they're do everything they can to make sure they replace the money that we're, that's gonna, the cities are going to lose from the privilege tax um, 
fee that everyone has. So, and, that and, and by the way, let's be clear about that privilege tax. Greenville wasn't losing any revenue. Mm -hmm. They were losing projected revenue mm -hmm. because they were raising the business exactly. license privilege tax, which is what the General Assembly had told them not to do. And then, we, and then it out, that don't even take effect, I think, what, the 2016? So that's the uh, that's unknown. So Right, I mean, so the, the, the tax increase goes in right now. Mm -hmm. But that money is not even budgeted for the budget until 2016. So like I so. said in Greenville, Green, Greenville is already going to have a surplus of funding um, this year because they know that um, their budget is based upon the old numbers. So we'll see with that. And, but in and again, I think everyone's looking at it, and, and Terry's bringing up a point where these money is stashed in different funds. There's additional $2 million stash aside from the rainy day fund balance for a catastrophe, for, catastrophe fund that I think is set aside for $2 million. It's like $2,300,000. There's a $1.5 million um, surplus with the health care, the health fund that they have. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways in this time of uncertainty the city council could have said, hold on. Let's just, you know, pass this for right now and see what happens in next year before we raise taxes. I think it was a knee-jerk reaction, and we talked about it before. I mean, we, we created a budget process when we were on there that was very detailed, very intense, 13 meetings, going through workshop by workshop with the city departments. City council pretty much got their budget on that Monday night with a new tax increase, added another tax increase, and passed it on Thursday. Now, what you're going to hear and what we've already begun to hear from uh, Calvin Mercer and some of the city council people, Calvin in his blog earlier this week basically pointed the finger at you and Max Joyner and others who were on the council before saying you you guys deferred these things and didn't weren't working on trying to get these things uh, repaired and done in the city, and that's the reason why we had to have the tax increase. I want to give you a chance to respond to that. <laughs> um as everyone well knows that the city council of last year is the one who actually started working on the infrastructure. Fixed the, the deficit, the projected $20 million deficit with the sanitation department. We fixed that. Um, we worked on the roads. We fixed the city software issue, 20-year-old 20, 20 software issue. So the city council of last year is probably the only council in the last two years who actually took a charge at infrastructure. I look at the other direction. The reason why we're in this situation, because they raised the taxes for the maintenance fund, which was infrastructure issues. Council, Calvin Mercer and the councils previous to this ignored maintenance. They built brand new stuff and never built in how to pay for it. And that's why the city is in a situation now to raise the, the, the taxes for the maintenance fund because they didn't take care of those infrastructure issues. City Council of last year, I mean, is documented, is out there, is the only one that actually addresses those maintenance issues. Mm -hmm. When we try to, they're just not spending the money on them right now. Right. Um, all right. Well, um, thank you for your willingness to serve on this bond advisory committee and to chair it. And um, I think you'll do a great job with that. You've got probably as much knowledge about these things as anybody. And uh, the question right now is not who knows what and how do we get to the truth and what do we really need to do? <laughs> and uh, it's gonna be interesting. And and you know, and, and we should say for people who are reading that newspaper article this morning. It's not. It's not an all or none situation. These the uh, the fact that there'd be a twenty eight million dollar general obligation bond, in my opinion, is ludicrous. I don't see how in the world uh, you'd ever get that passed. And so I don't. I don't think your committee is going to come back with that suggestion. Uh, so you know it, you you might, but you might come back with ten million now or six million, or you you guys could come back and 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 say zero. 28 million or somewhere in between or give a long-term 10 to 15 year plan do this now do this five years from now and do this five years after that so right a lot of things can come out of it well i'm glad you're there and i appreciate your willingness sir how much are you getting paid to serve on this committee uh, absolutely nothing <laughs> 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 it's not it's a thankless job oh, yes. oh yes yeah okay well thank you for being here this morning it's great talking to you thank you Dennis. It. good to see you man nice to see you. dennis mitchell good guy we'll be right back the big one is on at Greenville Toyota and the deals are hot. Hot, hot, hot. Get big one deals on new Corollas from $139 a month, Camrys $159 a month, and these aren't leases, you own it. Or drive with no interest for up to six years with no payments until fall. And we want to finance your future, not your past. Our goal is 100% credit approval. And you'll get it all with a Greenville Toyota Advantage. The big one deals are hot, hot, hot at Greenville Toyota where if you give us 15 minutes, we can lower your payment. 
When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on Beast Oaks Road. It's a well-secured facility with a living manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300. Where were you? It was about 4.30. I'd come home early for our anniversary. Then the call came. It was the doctor with my results. The last thing I remember is hearing those three words, you're cancer free. All across Eastern North Carolina, Vident Health Cancer Care Specialists and Navigators offer a team approach to detecting, treating, and beating the disease. Call Vident Health for Cancer Care. Unlock the best life has to offer for generations to come. Introducing the Legacy Membership exclusively at Ironwood Golf and Country Club. As a Legacy member, you'll not only enjoy all the benefits of an active, family-friendly lifestyle, your children and grandchildren will enjoy membership status as well. Belonging to Ironwood is remarkable. Sharing it with your entire family is even better. Become a Legacy member today only at Ironwood Golf and Country Club. Golf at its finest, life at its fullest. All right, back on Talk of the Day. This is some shocking economic news. Look at this. This just came out, just announced, out of Redmond, Washington. Microsoft will eliminate up to 18,000 jobs over the next year. Microsoft is laying people off? What's up with that? Probably because they don't need the manpower to do a lot of what they do now. Oh, here's why. Because they're going to be integrating the workforce with Nokia. They bought Nokia back oh. in April. So Microsoft said uh, Thursday uh, morning that of the up to 18,000 jobs, about 12,500 will be professional and factory jobs cut out. It anticipates charges of $1.1 billion to $1.6 billion over the next four quarters. Which includes seven hundred fifty million to eight hundred million for severance and related benefit costs. Good. Maybe they can update these. By the way, as a Windows result, servers. as a result, Microsoft's stock is expected to go up today. Hmm. So, if you own Microsoft, good day for you. If you work at Microsoft, bad day for you. <laughs> All right, here's McGee on sports. All right, the 143rd Open Chant. Let me say, British Open Alert, by the way, because many of you will go back and watch the replay later today. But the 143rd Open Championship underway from Royal Liverpool. Tiger Woods off to a bad start with two bogeys to start today. Rallied to uh, close with a 36. Three birdies there on the backside. He is at uh, two under right now, and one of a couple of players tied for 12th. Five under uh, right now is the lead, and uh, I'll save you... Uh, 
save you that, let you go back and watch uh, this afternoon, find out who that is. Won't tell you right now, but five players, or I should say one player now at six under par, uh, one at five, and a host of players at four under at Royal Liverpool. Pitt County's girls all-star softball team's off to a great start in pool play at the Babe Ruth Southeast Regional in Morganton. Got some updates from that last night. Eight and under team beat McDowell County 23 to three. The 10 and under team beat South Orlando seven to four, and the 12 and under squad took down Bunker Hill seven to two. And today, uh, let's see, East Bay, Florida will be the matchup for the eight under team. Only update I have, I did find out too, that the 12 and under team beat Covington after they beat uh, Bunker Hill yesterday. A transgender woman found slain in Baltimore is a sibling of an LA Clippers is of LA Clippers Ford and Kinson native Reggie Bullock. Bullock confirmed to WJZ TV in Baltimore that Mia Henderson, who was born Kevin Long, was his brother. Baltimore police said the 26 year old Henderson was found early Wednesday dead in an alley in Northwest Baltimore. All right, very good. Uh, hey, that's actually not good. I shouldn't say very good. I know good. what you meant. You know what I meant. I'm good. I, I, very I, good job with the sports is what I meant. Sure. That's kind of a strange and sad story. It is. I, I had no frankly. idea that uh, yeah. he even had a transgender sibling. Yeah. All right. A minute in front of nine. We are uh, done for the day. Just want to remind you again today, uh, there could be some late afternoon thunderstorms, but pretty much a beautiful day. Sunshine today. There's going to be... Um, uh, increasing clouds tonight, but the temperatures uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are going to be down. We're talking low to mid 80s, so the weather coming up looks really nice. And uh, you should uh, you should have a great weekend. There's always that threat of a late afternoon thunderstorm, as always in late July. But uh, weather looks really good, so enjoy yourself today. And as we move into the weekend, make plans to join us at the Double Tree. At the Atlantic Beach Double Tree for the Big Kahuna Beach Party Saturday after, Sunday afternoon from 1 to 4. Everybody, have yourself a great Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow.